Hello, I'm Jay. And I'm Dan. And this is our in-depth review of Cunard's Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is a Vista-class cruise ship which joined Cunard in 2010, and with a gross tonnage of around 92,000, she is a medium-sized cruise ship by today's standards. She operates usually with a guest capacity of around 2,100 passengers when COVID restrictions do not apply, and is complemented by a crew of 980, which means you have a passenger-to-crew ratio of just under 2 to 1. We sailed on Queen Elizabeth as part of a four-night mini-cruise to Amsterdam, where we had two nights in port and two evenings at sea. In this review we're going to touch on everything that matters to you, the service, the dining, the staterooms and the ship's amenities and facilities. We'll also disclose what we loved about Queen Elizabeth and what we think could be done better by Cunard. So if you're ready, let's start the review. We're going to start with accommodation. Accommodation on board Queen Elizabeth ranges from inside staterooms through to Queen's Grill Suites. In addition, you have the class-based system which Cunard operates whereby you will dine at dining room according to your class of cabin and you will receive some perks and be able to access parts of the ships not accessible by those in steerage. Oh sorry, I mean Britannia class accommodation. Britannia class is the lowest class of accommodation on Queen Elizabeth and includes inside, outside and balcony staterooms. If you're staying in Britannia class accommodation, you will dine in the Britannia dining room. You will receive sparkling wine on arrival, Penhaligon's luxury toiletries, Cunard bathrobes and slippers, fresh fruit on request, 24 hour room service, tea and coffee making facilities, a mini fridge, a safe and a nightly turn down service with a chocolate. If you would like an in-depth tour of a Britannia balcony stateroom, please check out that tour on our channel or click the banner in the top right hand corner now. The next class up is the Britannia club accommodation. In this class you'll receive the exact same benefits as those in Britannia class, however you will additionally receive the privilege of a pillow concierge menu where you can select up to seven different types of pillow. You will also dine in the more intimate and refined Britannia Club restaurant, but you will be served the food from the same menu as those in the Britannia dining room. Moving up the classes you have the Princess Grill Suites. The Princess Grills are similar to a superior balcony cabin on board other ships belonging to different cruise lines. You receive the same benefits of those in Britannia Class and Britannia Club, but you'll also receive concierge service, sparkling wine and chocolates on arrival, the option of in-house dining from the Princess Grill menu, a deluxe coffee machine, premium bathrobes and slippers, personalised stationery, an atlas to discover where you are in the world, priority embarkation, full access to the Grills Lounge and Grills Terrace, and you'll dine in the prestigious Princess Grill restaurant, where you'll be served food from a finer and more luxurious menu compared to that offered to the Britannia guests. The top and most prestigious accommodation aboard Queen Elizabeth is the Queen's Grill Suites. As a Queen's Grill guest, you are promised to experience the pinnacle in luxury ocean travel, Passengers in Queen's Grill accommodation will receive everything that is offered to a Princess Grill guest, in addition to butler service, pre-dinner canapes, a personalised bar stocked with two bottles of wine or spirits, and a choice of soft drinks. You also get an iPad in Q1 and Q2 suites, books and an atlas, priority disembarkation, priority tender services when ports require, and you will dine in the sublime Queen's Grill restaurant. Speaking as guests that stayed in a Britannia class balcony stateroom, we found that the cabin was spacious, nicely appointed and decorated with class to match the style and ambience of the rest of the ship. Our only criticism was the fact that you have a shower curtain rather than a shower door. While this is a personal preference, we don't feel that a shower curtain matches the luxurious image Cunard like to promote. If you get shower doors on a budget cruise line like Morella, Surely Cunard can give them to their guests too. Let's talk about the dining on board Queen Elizabeth. Because of the class system that is operated by Cunard, you have four main dining rooms according to class. Britannia Dining Room, Britannia Club, the Princess Grill and the Queen's Grill. Because we haven't had the privilege of trying the Princess Grill and the Queen's Grill restaurants, we will have to focus our experience in the Britannia Dining Room for this review. Both the Britannia Dining Room and the Britannia Club restaurants serve the same menu 
the Britannia Club just offers a more intimate and personal dining experience. In terms of the quality of food in the Britannia main dining room, we weren't blown away. As part of the pandemic, Cunard have drastically cut the variety of their menus, meaning for those with dietary issues, you may find it difficult to choose, particularly on the first night where you can only select from the main menu. On nights after, you will be offered a standardised menu of dishes to suit your dietary needs, and they will take your order the night before. The quality was, I'm afraid to say, pretty basic. It didn't come close to the standards we've had on Cunard in the past, and certainly doesn't replicate the presentation of dishes Cunard like to promote on their website and in their brochures. This is not an issue just limited to Cunard. At the time of filming this video, we have sailed on eight different cruise ships belonging to six different cruise lines since cruising recommenced. And it's been our observation that the food and service in the main dining rooms has deteriorated considerably across the board. Do you share this experience? Have you noticed a drop in standards since the pandemic? Let us know by dropping a comment below. The Lido restaurant is Queen Elizabeth's buffet style restaurant. Because of the pandemic, self-service is still unavailable and food will be served to you rather than you helping yourself. As buffet style restaurants go, variety is a lot less compared to larger ships operated by different cruise lines. However, we had no issue with the quality of food served here. The food alternates each day and each evening they will serve a different nationality of cuisine. The Indian night was particularly great and we would have been happy to pay for the quality of the food served to us. If there's nothing here to take your fancy, there's always the Lido Pizzeria in the Lido restaurant itself, and you can create your own pizza and they cook it right in front of you. They also serve a different Asian dish each day here, such as Pad Thai noodles, and you can select to have it made with vegetables, prawns, pork, beef, chicken or tofu. Because of the class system that Cunard operates, it means that you have four main dining rooms on board which seriously eats into deck space. This means that there is only one speciality restaurant available on Queen Elizabeth, and that's the Veranda. The Veranda is a French inspired steakhouse, and it's nothing short of fantastic. Credit where credit is due, I can justify spending $45 per person here as the service standard of food and the premium surroundings you get at this venue are fantastic. On both Queen Elizabeth and Queen Mary II in equal measure. Please note, some items on the menu such as the seafood platter Fruit de Mer do come at an additional charge. Seeing as Cunard seem to outdo their rivals when it comes to their speciality steakhouse, it would be lovely if Cunard could introduce another speciality restaurant onto their ships or maybe close off a section of the Lido restaurant so there's an extra alternative dining venue on board. We can't help but feel that one speciality restaurant is a little poor and we would like to see a little bit more on offer to passengers when there's nothing taking their fancy in the main restaurants. Also, having one speciality dining venue means it gets booked up very quickly. In fact, the veranda was fully booked for the entire cruise on day one. So, best book before boarding or as soon as you get on. Another dining option for lunch on Queen Elizabeth is the Golden Lion Pub, which does deserve some serious recognition. Serving a range of British favourites including fish and chips and chicken tikka masala, the Golden Lion is included in your cruise fare and operates on a first come, first serve basis. It is incredibly popular, especially on sea days, so we'd recommend you make a point of getting there early if you would like a table. Now let's talk about the famous Cunard afternoon tea. What on earth happened? We had a pretty poor experience with the afternoon tea a few months ago aboard Queen Mary 2 and we tried to give Cunard the benefit of the doubt and put it down to teething problems getting the ship back into service. However, I'm afraid to say much of the issues we had on QM2 continued into the experience we had on Queen Elizabeth. Service is painfully slow for some, but not others. We watched as people nearby was being served tea, sandwiches and even scones but where we were sat, we waited 25 minutes to be offered a dry sandwich, and by that point, it was really just the leftovers on offer. The scones were great, as were the cakes and pastries, but the tea was warm and we had to ask three times for milk and sugar. Another observation is they use their fine wedge wood china, and yet they give you sachets of sugar, no different to what you get in a greasy spoon calf or a motorway service station. It just lets the experience down, and we can't help but think cubes of sugar would be more appropriate for this afternoon tea experience, and for the delightful details they promise. 
The Cunard afternoon tea is included in your cruise fare, so we're not going to be too harsh, but it used to stand out for good reason. However, we've had much better afternoon teas in recent months with different cruise lines, and for us, the Cunard afternoon tea has a lot of catching up to do if it's going to come anywhere close to competing cruise lines and for what it used to be. Service. Is it the outstanding service Cunard promised though? Well, not really. The service isn't bad, not by any stretch of the imagination, but it does not surpass what other cruise lines offer, and it seems at times pretty standard. What makes it worse is your charge for gratuities on each drink, and gratuities are added to your bill each day unless removed. And when you consider the service is no better on P&O and Marilla, which don't charge you for service, you do have to question why you're overpaying for a service which isn't any better than what you're getting with competing cruise lines. On the subject of overpaying, we still feel that Cunard are overly expensive for what you get. As we've touched on, service and the standard of food on board didn't really blow us away and doesn't excel in our opinion. Sounds harsh, but it's the truth. Princess, Celebrity and Holland America are Cunard's closest competitors. Entertainment is very much similar with guest speakers, enrichment classes and music acts featuring throughout much of the daily programmes. And it would be fair to say that the entertainment and things to do during the day are geared up to the older ages, with little, if anything, for younger people to do, if the aforementioned types of entertainment aren't to your liking. These four cruise lines also proudly promote the quality and standard of their food and service on board. So the question is, where does Cunard rank? Well, in our opinion, it would have to be last. From our experience, the standard of food and service on board Celebrity, Princess and Holland America are significantly better than what we've had on both Queen Mary 2 and Queen Elizabeth, with the exception of the veranda, which we would say is one of the best, if not the best, specialty dining venues we've been to. The surroundings on Cunard and Queen Elizabeth are impressive. We love the Art Deco interior of her bars and lounges, the grand lobby and the gorgeous Britannia dining room. We feel that the ship interiors is where Cunard still excel. Queen Elizabeth has some of the nicest interiors we've seen on a ship and she feels very regal. Now we understand that sailing with Cunard is about the experience of sailing on a line with so much history and tradition. We appreciate all that, but they have to be able to offer better value for money than their rivals and they're not. Guests on Celebrity, regardless of cabin grade, receive inclusive drinks, gratuities and Wi-Fi. Similarly, on Princess and Holland America, there's the option of adding a premium package so you can unlock benefits such as inclusive drinks, gratuities and Wi-Fi. Such options aren't available on Cunard, so you have to pay for these things separately and it works out a lot more money. The Wi-Fi on Cunard is extortionate, charged at $15 for 30 minutes, and seeing as it takes an age for anything to load, I can't recommend it. If your loyalty tier is gold and above, you will be rewarded with free internet minutes. As a gold member, we received 45 minutes of internet free. It's a perk, I guess, but it seems a little tight. And as for drink prices, they are utterly ridiculous. $18 for a cocktail is beyond a rip-off, and it's aspects like this that sour our opinion of Cunard and leave us scratching our heads not knowing why people would remain loyal to Cunard when there are much better options out there for less money. We want Cunard to get back to what they used to do well, delivering on that impeccable service, sensational cuisine and being recognised as a luxury brand worldwide. If they want to get back to what they once were, and so that they can compete effectively with similar cruise brands, then they should ditch the Wi-Fi charges, abandon all this pain for drinks malarkey, especially for grills guests, and focus on improving standards, particularly with regards to the food in the main dining room and service across the board, so that it stands out rather than coming across as pretty average. Unless they make these changes, I can't see how I could be convinced to say that Cunard offer good value for money to the passenger. Queen Elizabeth is a really impressive ship. In fact, we think parts of her interior are unrivalled and we like the size of her. We just want Cunard to regain that historic sparkle and she would if Cunard focused on improving these areas. Food and service on board Queen Elizabeth just seem very average. The food in the grills may be fantastic, but for us in the Britannia dining room, it was a very bland dining experience, one which I wouldn't make a point of remembering.
Having said all this, we would sail on Queen Elizabeth again, and with Cunard. The spa on Queen Elizabeth is seriously impressive, and we would strongly recommend you give it a try by booking a two hour slot when you're on board. These spa slots give you full access to the hydrotherapy pool and the thermal suite, including use of the orthopaedic beds. Slots are charged at $35 for a two hour slot, and they are worth every penny. As we've already mentioned, also book the Veranda Steakhouse. We cannot praise this speciality dining venue enough. It's so good, and judging by the fact that it's sold out on day one of our cruise, other guests know that as well. We do hope you've enjoyed this review of Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is a really great ship, and we look forward to sailing on her again. We just feel that Cunard are falling short in a few areas, which lets down the whole experience of sailing on board this magnificent ship. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We've got so many cruises lined up in the coming months and we would love to take you with us.